public policy, I think, will in the coming years become much more important again. And this is not to go back to you know, this period where we thought that the state is the solution to all problems, speak 60s, 70s, into the 80s, and then almost the other end of the extreme, the Chicago boys and the school of you know, just get the state out of the economy and let you know, the market forces determine what happens next. We wasted the better part of, I would say, three decades in this pendulum from one extreme to the other. Public policy is as much about an expression of social choice and political preference as it is also the enabling of markets to function and to work. And my argument has often been that markets are not analogous to the physical laws of science where supply and demand function almost as an equivalent to the laws of gravity. No, they are a human construct. They have been for centuries. And in those human constructs, we insert priorities, ethics, rights, opportunities, the license to operate. And public policy is the way in which we do this, particularly in our era today. And one area is this question of job creation. Governments lose elections when unemployment rates reach a certain point. When governments, public policy cannot create the kind of economic conditions in which the vast majority of people have the choice to work. So what happens next on the job front is absolutely central. And I often wonder why it is that in our analysis of public policy options and opportunities, in an age where employment is such a challenge in many countries, and pollution has become such a challenge to many societies, economies, and people, why is a concept such as an ecological tax reform not actually breaking into the center stage of political discourse? Because if you could, just imagine for a moment, Reduce the cost of a unit of labor in our economy by de-taxing the fact of labor. Because, again, strange thing. In a time where unemployment is a challenge, youth unemployment is a crisis in many countries, the thing that is taxed most in our societies is actually people working. Income tax and all the other taxes that come with it. So why not try and take an approach where we don't just have the Green Party arguing for a tax on petrol, but we have a national development ministry and a treasury in a country such as the UK saying, how do we actually reduce the cost of labor, make people more attractive and not so replaceable with automation, and tax the balance in our society, shift the burden of taxation, rethink fiscal policy with a green economy, but also an inclusive and livelihood paradigm driving it. Or, and you may agree or disagree with this, as Bill Gates put forward a notion a few weeks ago. Robots, automation. Why should a robot actually not be taxed like a human being doing the same amount of work? I think it's a very interesting idea because it creates an equivalence. Because we have this strange view that a human being who works and earns money is a perfectly legitimate target for the collective to tax. But a company that deploys technology and puts thousands of robots in his or her place somehow is allowed to produce and then argue, well, you know, technology and automation and robots are just so much cheaper. What stops us as a society and as development thinkers from saying, well, these are choices that we can make. And it's not being a Luddite. It's just correcting for things that are essentially becoming market failures, not just in an economic and profit-loss-making sense, but market failures in a social and developmental sense.